Thanks very much, Keith. Uh, this afternoon, what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to give an introduction, first of all, to our company, Zag International, who we, do, who we are and what we do, uh, and then cover the cementitious materials supply and demand trends going forward in the world. Now, there are a couple of deliberate mistakes in this presentation. The first one being on this opening slide, it says February the 10th. It's actually February the 9th. So that's just a test if you're still awake after lunch. <coughs> Right, going forward, who we are. So, hang on, it's just gone too far there. So who we are, we're a, a global marketing, sales, and material supply company focused entirely on the cement industry, which is why I'm here. But that also overlaps with the steel industry and also with the power generation industry. The two main materials that we move around the world are granulated blast furnace slag and fly ash. But we also supply intermediate products such as clinker and finished goods such as cement. And being associated with the cement industry, we also can supply all the raw materials associated with the cement industry, such as limestone and gypsum. What we also have within the company is an internal freight brokering system. So whatever material we do supply, we supply, can supply it on a delivered or CFR basis. And we're also not a spot sale or spot trade company. All our business is generally long term. So a typical contract with our company would be three to five years. I think the shortest contract we have is a single year contract. Our business model is to work with partners, whether they be suppliers, customers, or shipping companies. And our model is that we only win if our business partners win. So we try and grow our company by growing the business of our business partners, whether you're a supplier or an end use customer. So that's who we are, that's what we stand for, and that's our business model. We were founded in 2001 in the US, uh, originally as a consulting company to the petrochemical industry, but quite quickly moved on to cementitious materials. And then in 2006, moved away from just US focused, and then became a global business. I actually joined the company in early 2012, as Keith said earlier. Uh, and since 2006, we've had steady growth along with the industry globally. We've now got offices in North America, Europe, Asia, and Oceania. The Oceania being Australia, which is where I'm coming, coming from. So this is our approach to business. We've called it industrial ecology. We basically take the waste or coal products or byproducts from one industry, being steel or power generation, and use it as a raw material into the cement industry and we ship it around the world. We like to think of it as industry interconnectivity. Cement and clinker, SCMs, freight rates, and fuel. And just to give you an example about how that works, I'll, I'll give you an example of a customer in Australia. Started in business six or seven years ago. We've now had three consecutive three-year contracts with them, initially starting out just supplying clinker. But as the business grew, so we've got a long-term freight contract and a long-term clinker supply contract out of China. So leveraging off that, we started bringing down GGBFS in jumbo bags. So they entered a new sector of the market. And gradually over a period of time as that grew, we then started supplying GBFS in single bulk ships out of Japan. So that enabled them to enter a new sector of the market and for us to grow our business. Other materials we've put on the same ship from different sources in China would be limestone, FGD gypsum, and hydrated lime. So as our customer is growing, we are also growing our own business. The key with freight rates is to pick a time when the freight rates are low, which is now, and then forward lock in your freight rates. So as a cement manufacturer, you know what your rates are gonna be this year, you know what they're gonna be next year, and you know what they're gonna be the following year. So it's a very good tool for managing your cost base and managing your business going forward. Fuels, using that self-same example in Australia, as we're bringing the clinker down from China, the Chinese cement manufacturer has asked about bringing Australian coal back. I don't know if you do know, in China there are some significant environmental issues, and the Chinese government is trying to reduce the sulfur level, impose a limit on the sulfur level in coal. So a lot of Australian coal has quite a low sulfur level, so what we're looking at doing is not just bringing the clinker one way, but bringing in, taking low sulfur Australian coal back up to China. So we look at it as industry interconnectivity. 
A number of speakers this morning have told about the 